Hey guys, Grady's mom here with volume two of my cooking series. This is a recipe for a pork stroganoff in the slow cooker. Um, so I don't know how to, I don't know how you would adjust the times and everything. If you were to make it on the stove top, it definitely could be done, but I've only ever made this recipe in the slow cooker. So what you're going to need for this recipe is you're going to need bone in pork chops. Um, you obviously can use boneless if you prefer that, but I've just had better luck with the bone in. So I have three large pork chops here. You're going to need some butter. I'm using this type of butter, which is more like a margarine, but you can use the stick butter or whatever butter that you prefer. You're going to need some dry parsley just for garnishing. Um, you can throw a little bit in, but I just use it at the end to garnish with. You're going to need some sour cream. You're going to need half cup of water. You're going to need the roast pork gravy mix, which is just a dry packet. If you can't find roast pork, you could use a brown gravy mix, but I would recommend the packet over the kind that comes liquefied in the jar. You're also going to need one can of cream of mushroom soup. You're going to need eight ounces of Baby Bella mushrooms. I have an eight ounce package right here already sliced. And I actually have about three ounces of regular white mushrooms left over from a previous recipe. And mushrooms don't have a long shelf life, so I'm going to go ahead and throw these in as well just to use them up. And I also happen to love mushrooms. If you don't love mushrooms, you can omit this. You're really only going to need the eight ounces of the Baby Bella. Now everything here is going to cook um, into a sauce on the pork, and I like to serve this dish over egg noodles. I've also served it over white rice or brown rice, but I found, in my opinion, it tastes the best over the egg noodles. And I'm, what I'm going to do first is get the pork seared up in a hot frying pan. And searing just means you're browning the outside of the meat. You're not going to cook it all the way through because it is going to slow cook in the slow cooker. But the searing just means you're going to get a nice brown kind of crust on the outside of the meat. So I'm going to go ahead and get these into the frying pan now and show you guys how to do that. Okay guys, so to sear the meat, you're gonna want a big frying pan, and I have about one tablespoon of my butter in the frying pan. You're gonna want your frying pan hot, so I have mine just under high, and you're gonna wanna let all the butter melt before you put the meat in. If possible, you're gonna wanna let your meat sit out um, to get to room temperature, because you know if you throw it in you know, ice cold out of the fridge, it's not going to get as good of a sear. But if you're kind of short on time and you have to throw it in cold, that's fine. But if you do have an extra few minutes, even 10 minutes would be better than nothing to let it kind of get the chill off a little bit, you will find you'll get a better crust on it. So I'm just waiting for my butter to melt throughout, and then I'm gonna throw my pork chops in. Okay guys, so my butter is melted and as you can see it's sort of sizzling, which means the pan is hot. So I actually have four chops here. I thought there were three, but there are four. So I'm going to go ahead and get them into the pot, the pan. Make sure they're separated here. Oh, there's actually five of them. So I'm gonna do batches. I'm gonna do three, because you don't wanna crowd the pan. So I'm gonna get my first three in and I'm gonna let these work for a few minutes, flip them over. Again, we're not cooking them all the way. We're just getting the outside crusty and nice and kind of brown and caramelized because it's going to lock in all the flavor. You don't wanna throw your chops in the crock pot raw for this recipe. So again, just gonna let these do their thing and I will be back to show you how they look when I flip them. Okay, so while my pork chops are searing, I added the envelope of the dry gravy mix. You can see it there on the bottom. And then I put my cream of mushroom soup, just one can on top of the dry gravy mix. And what you're gonna wanna do is combine that. So again, you're gonna com combine the dry powder form gravy mix into the soup and it's gonna turn it a bit brown because you're adding something wet to something dry. And since it is a brown gravy, it's obviously gonna turn it brown. So I'm just gonna mix this up so that all the powdery stuff is mixed in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and dump in my white mushrooms and I'm gonna get my Baby Bella mushrooms open out of the package and dump those in as well. Okay, so I have my Baby Bellas going in and now I'm just going to mix this all together. It's gonna to be really thick because obviously we're not, we haven't added any water yet. And the water is actually going to be a step you cannot miss either. So I'm just gonna keep going ahead and combining this mixture 
kind of goopy. And then I'm gonna put this into the hot crock pot, which I have preheating on low. Okay guys, so a few minutes have gone by and I'm gonna go ahead and flip these over. Pans nice and hot. And again, what you're looking for is that nice crust around the edge. Because again, we're not fully cooking these, we just are looking for that little bit of crust around the edge of the meat. So I'm gonna let side two go for another two to three minutes, and then I'm gonna remove these, and I'm gonna put the second batch, which is the last two chops, and do the same thing in this pan. Okay guys, so a few minutes have gone by, I would say two to three minutes. I'm just gonna go ahead and get these right out of the hot pan, directly into my crock pot, which has the mushroom, and the cream of mushroom soup, and the gravy mix. I'm gonna put these right on top of that. Third one, right on top. Now I'm going to add just a little bit more butter to this hot pan, since I'm doing the, pot, the pork chops in batches. I wanna make sure it has enough fresh butter in there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get my second two chops right into the same pan. Should be nice and sizzling hot, which is what you want. Right in. Same thing. So I'm going to give it two to three minutes and flip it over. Okay, guys, so first side's done. Going to flip it over to the second side. Again, you're just looking for that little bit of crust right around the edge. I have my three already seared pork chops on top of the mushroom and gravy mixture. I'm gonna add my other two on here so it's all the mushroom mixture is covered because when it cooks, all that gravy and mushrooms is gonna melt and form a really liquidy sauce and it's gonna cook all the meat. It's gonna be delicious. Okay, so these are ready to come out. Again, we're going right from the pan into the crock pot. So I think I'm gonna flip this one over because you want all the mushrooms to be covered. So just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead now and just cover it for just a moment. Now this is gonna be a step you do not want to skip. You're going to take your water and you're going to pour your water into the hot pan. It's gonna, probably gonna to get too loud to hear me in a minute. Just like that. And you're gonna crank your heat up too high. Why are we doing this? It is called deglazing. And what it is going to do, once the pot heats back up real hot, it's going to get all those bits of meat and brown, like little bits of flavor, off the bottom of the pan. So it's taking that butter flavor and the flavor of any of the meat juices and any of the little meat fat bits, it's going to take that off the bottom. And again, it's called deglazing. It's an actual, actual culinary term that's used all the time and it is a legit process of getting the flavor off the bottom of the pan. The nice thing is it also loosens everything up so it's a lot easier to clean. So see how it's starting to sizzle a little bit? We're just gonna let it crank up to a nice simmer like that. So you're looking for that to get really, really hot. Again, you're gonna want your burner on high. So we're just gonna stir it and as we're stirring, we're loosening up all that bits of flavor on the bottom. And you don't want to skip this step. It's going to be pretty crucial for the flavor and this actual dish. I've made this dish so many times. When I was young, at, right out of college, I was always looking for cheap, inexpensive meals to make because I was just out of college, in debt, just got my first real job. And I used to make this all the time in the crock pot because I worked really long hours when I was young. I was in the mortgage business. So I would go in like 9.30 in the morning and not get home sometimes till like nine o'clock at night and I would make this in the morning before work. And my roommates would say when I got home, it was so hard to not eat that because they had to smell it because they all got home at normal times, like 5.30, 6 o'clock. So they'd have to see my crock pot and smell this all, you know, all evening while they're starving. And then I would get home and eat it and they'd be so jealous. So eventually I just started making it for all of us. They would just give me money for their portions. Okay, so that looks pretty good. It looks like all the bits are gone. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the burner. Now I'm going to take the lid off the crock pot 
And this might seem weird, but believe me, you don't, you guys don't want to miss this step. You're going to want to take this hot buttery liquid and you're going to want to pour it all over the pork chops like that. We're done with that pan. So it's, see, it's all over the top and we're just going to set the lid and forget it. So I'm going to cook this on low guys for seven hours. I'm going to check it halfway through and kind of adjust things. So I'll show you guys what that adjustment looks like halfway through in about three and a half hours from now. And that's it. Okay, guys, so about three and a half hours have gone by. And it smells amazing. And as you can see, it's really thinned out a lot from the way it was when we put it in. So I'm just giving this all a stir just to loosen everything up. And we're in the home stretch now, so we have just about three more hours to go. So I'll show you guys what it looks like before we dig in. Okay, so we're in the home stretch. I have my big pot of water boiling. It's all ready to go. And my egg noodles are going to go right in the pot for seven minutes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set my timer for seven minutes and let that do its thing. I'll just give it a stir in a couple minutes. My pork is done. I actually turned my crock pot on warm, so it stopped the cooking process, but it's still keeping it warm. So I'm just gonna wait my seven minutes for my noodles to get done. I will drain those out, and then I'm gonna remove the meat from here and add the sour cream to make it more stroganoff-ish and creamy, so I will be back with you shortly. All right, guys, so my pasta is just about finished, couple minutes left. So what I'm gonna do now is I took, I'm taking a tongue and see how it just breaks apart like that. You're gonna wanna get the meat out. Hopefully, it's, see it's breaking right up. It's so tender, which is good, but you're just gonna have to be gentle with it when you're getting the meat out. So you're just gonna get the meat out, see it fell apart, which means it is super tender. So we're just taking the meat out as it's falling apart, which is normal. You want that, it's been slow cooking, so you have to expect that it's gonna be tender. So I'm just doing the best I can to get all the pork pieces out. Just trying to be as gentle as I can. You're not even gonna need a knife because the meat is just so tender. It's like pulled pork consistency. So getting the meat out, and then you're gonna leave the gravy and the um, mushrooms in there. If a few mushrooms escape, that's fine. I've already had a few escape. So just taking the meat out. Again, you can serve this with rice if your family doesn't eat pasta or doesn't have pasta. Um, rice is fine, brown or white rice. You could also mix them. I mix brown and white rice a lot. So that looks pretty good. There are obviously a couple little chunks of meat in there, but you know, just get a majority of it out. So the rest is just like a saucy gravy consistency. So there's my meat. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my sour cream, open that up, and I'm going to add my sour cream in here, and this brown gravy is going to turn into a stroganoff sauce. Okay guys, so I have my sour cream. This recipe calls for a third of a cup. I actually hate sour cream. It makes me sick, <laughs> but I do tolerate it in this recipe because that's what makes the stroganoff, but I do use less than a third of a cup, again, because I don't like it. I'm just not a fan. So I'm going to use about two tablespoons give or take. So you're just going to swirl that in. And as you can see, it's already starting to make this sauce creamy, which is the stroganoff sauce. And you could obviously, if you really can't stand sour cream, even in recipes, you don't have to add it at all. But traditionally stroganoff has sour cream in it in any traditional stroganoff recipe that you're going to make. So that is about the color that you want. If you love sour cream, feel free to add a little bit more. But that's all I can really stand as far as sour cream. It is definitely one of my top foods that I don't like. So that's what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead now and get it plated up, and I will show you guys before we dig in. Okay, guys, so here is what the final product looks like before we dig in. I did go ahead and add some dried parsley on here for color and flavor, and the gravy just coats those noodles perfectly. The mushrooms are perfectly cooked. 
It is just absolutely delicious, completely fork tender. You don't need a knife at all. And it's a real crowd pleaser, especially for those who love beef stroganoff. They're gonna love the pork stroganoff. So we are just having this tonight and we're gonna have some soft rolls. These are really, really soft dinner rolls. And we're gonna have those on the side. And this is dinner tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed and have a great day.